They've automated the process of getting newspapers, but they haven't computerized it yet. That is not unless you have a personal computer, a modem, and access to an online database. Then you can read papers from all over the country, and you don't even need exact change. Today, we begin a special two-part look at online services on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and sitting in this week for Gary Kildall is George Morrow. George, I don't know how much of a gambler you are, <laughs> but here is an example of how far online services have come. We're on Quantum Link, something mm -hmm. called the Casino. As you can see, I'm online here with lots of players around the country. We can talk up and back here at the bottom of the screen. I can go in here and place a bet and actually play the slot machine, see if I can win some money. Not real money, of course, here. Now look at the graphics on this thing. What does this tell you about this approach to online information? Well, this game works very well for a media that's basically warm to sometimes hot. Some of the online services, you'd think you're back in the days of talking to a teletype mm -hmm, with a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, what you have to do is you have to play your interface to the warmness of the media. And some of the better online services are doing that. They're all going to have to learn how to do it. George, today we're going to take a look in this first of a two-part series on online services, a general interest online databases such as Quantum Link and CompuServe. We'll take a look at the Dow Jones News Service, Delphi, and one of the rare looks at France's Minitel system. Now, George, you know, you can read the entire San Francisco Chronicle online now online, if you like. Online, something I always wanted to do. <laughs> well, if you do want to do that, we have a report for you on that. Newspaper publishing is largely an art of mind over matter. How to put ideas and events into physical shape as quickly as possible. One of the obstacles to assembling that information has been the printed document itself, the thousands of pages that flow out of printing presses every day. Typically, the masses of photos, drawings, and words are carefully clipped and stored in bulging files, where they become historical material. Today, at some major newspapers like the San Francisco Chronicle, paper files are being replaced with online digital storage. Working through an online service called Data Times, the Chronicle is building an electronic library. Each day's news stories are added to the database within 24 hours. The key to the system's speed is the software, which takes the final story as entered into the newsroom's computers and automatically reformats the writer's editing commands into retrievable library form. After some classifying and editing by the Chronicle's library staff, stories can be recalled by keywords, subject, or by other cross-references. If a reporter needs background information, he can scan through the titles of past stories and view the full text of those that are the most relevant. Data Times gathers articles from 30 metropolitan newspapers, as well as some foreign news services. In the early days of computing, memory storage was precious and costly. Today, the newest form of information storage is taking its place alongside one of the oldest and most valued. Joining us now in the studio is Steve Case, Vice President of Marketing for Quantum Link, and with us also Stephen Fickus, a West Coast account executive with CompuServe. George? When you think of H&R Block, usually you think about going in and getting your taxes filled out. What is it, why is it that H&R Block invested in CompuServe, and what are they going to bring to it? Well, there's actually three different areas that H&R uh, Block will benefit from having CompuServe under uh, its uh, 
under its portfolio, let's mm -hmm. say, let's say, mm -hmm. and those are in the online access to information. That's one area. That's mm -hmm. growing really quickly. The other area is network services, nationwide network services, linking people's personal computers into these host computers that major corporations have. And finally, the actual building of a company's information service that people remotely can get into. All those three areas are growing very quickly, and H&R uh, Block should probably benefit from that, I think. Stephen, I, I love these online services, and a lot of people are great fans of them, but as you know, you get a lot of complaints from users. You have your mm -hmm. feedback thing. I'd be interested in knowing what are the biggest complaints? What would people like to see done better? Uh, on these online services? Well, it, it tends to be, you know, things jumping around to other services easily. The, the yeah. movement going from one access to another, it seems to be the key complaint that we get, uh, if any. You know, making it easy to use is one thing, but uh, really people like to jump instantly to the, inst to the other services they I mean, use. And it's the time lag, it's the one moment, please, dot, dot, dot. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, let me ask you one of my complaints, the problem of different languages, different commands in different parts of the service. Why can't that be cleaned up so you can learn one set of commands and go anywhere. <laughs> well, you know, that, that tends to be a function of how many different bits of information we have sitting out there on our service. And, uh, you know, we have to try to structure it so it standardizes some approaches. But, well, but you know, some of, the, some of the things you do are like database management, and mm -hmm. some of it is like spreadsheets. Why don't you guys get together with the big hitters in those to make your interfaces more familiar? If you're mm -hmm. doing database management, why not think about a connection with Ashton Tate? If you're doing a spreadsheet stuff or financial stuff, why not look for the Lotus uh, interface? Now, this thing where Lotus is teaming up with uh, one of these services is, is mm -hmm. certainly a good example of that. It's something that... Well, you can bet we're exploring all those areas. Uh, yeah, you know, there are some areas that we could improve on, and uh, it's defi that's definitely... Well, you're talking to a couple of fellows that use it a lot, mm -hmm. and we feel these things. Right. Steve, what about Quantum Link? What kind of feedback do you get from Quantum Link users? You have a kind of more graphic-friendly uh, home approach to, to your online service. Right, we just launched Quantum Link a year ago in November, and when we entered the market, we saw three problems for consumer users of online services. The first is they were too expensive. The second was they are just too difficult mm -hmm. to use. And the, and the third is they just weren't weren't fun. And so mm -hmm. what we've tried to do is develop a service specifically for Commodore users that's just very easy to use. The commands, as you mentioned, work the same across the entire system. Very inexpensive, and there's just a lot of things that are useful to a Commodore user, but they're also fun. We're not, not afraid to have fun. Yeah, CompuServe is very well known. I guess the largest online service. A lot of our viewers right. are familiar with it. Uh, I'd like you to show us Quantum Link, though, which is specially designed for Commodore users, right, Steve? Sure. And show us what the kinds of things you can get on Quantum Link. What we're looking at right now is the Quantum Link main menu. As you see, there's eight different departments on the service. To move around, all you do is use this cursor key and it will flash around to the mm -hmm. different departments. Down here are most of the information and transaction services. Commodore Information Network is where you can get help from Commodore. And Commodore Software Showcase is where there's over 4,000 free public domain it shows people connection, for example. Okay, you just pop up to that uh, particular mm -hmm. area, press F1, that's the select key to pull up that menu. We're loading a screen from the uh, disk so the graphics don't have to be transmitted okay, over so the So the phone graphics line. are on the software here, they're not coming online, right. obviously. So it gives you that friendly feel without you having to wait for the transmission mm -hmm. time. People connection is what we call a social center of the system. That's where people meet in, in rooms like a lobby, which you see here, and they can chat with each other, conduct conferences. Mm -hmm. We have special guests, rock stars, and computer programmers. That's like so your forth. CB simulator, I yes, guess, the same thing. Precisely. Yeah. And, and t as going back to the issue of user interface, we've tried to build in uh, just a one key to pull up the uh, commands you would like to uh, anytime you want to get uh -huh. to anywhere. And that works the same no matter what. Across the entire system. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to take the concepts yeah. of interaction and just make it yeah. much simpler for yeah, the average user. So you're online now in, uh, in people, what do you call it, people? People connection. people connection, and we're in the lobby, and you can see there's 23 people now with us in the lobby. We can type a message like hi, it comes down at the bottom, and simply press return, it'll be broadcast to everybody in that mm -hmm. room. There are always a dozens of different rooms, and you can create your own. We could create a room called mm -hmm. Chronicles if we'd like, yeah. so it really allows you to personalize but it. But you people, you have chosen to be very specific to a piece of hardware, where CompuServe does have a tougher, you guys have got a tougher job you because you're on a lot of different computers. Well, let me ask you both a question about this, but I, I've gone on the, the people link type thing and the, and the uh, CB simulator. Does anybody ever say anything meaningful or useful in these things? You hear an awful lot of straight chit chat. 
Well, there's a, there's a couple different classes. We have scheduled conferences each night. In fact, we publish a program guide, much like a TV guide. And any particular night, there's seven or eight events with some, some real people, and you can ask questions. Uh, there is a lot of just very social banter. It really is an area for people to just meet friends and, and talk about whatever their interests are, some of which well, are real about, and some of which we've are We've heard just, about people meeting and falling in love married. and getting married absolutely, online. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've heard stories that Quantum Link is going to go beyond Commodore sometime. Is that true? We are looking at that. Right now we are focusing very heavily on the Commodore market, but we very much uh, think this approach would work in other segments of the home as well. Stephen, on the CompuServe side, are you guys playing around with ideas like this to, to lend a little more, as George was talking about, sort of a hot medium approach to, to the user interface in CompuServe? Well, uh, yes, we are, we are playing a lot around with uh, graphics approaches and things like that. But again, you brought up a point. We're dealing with all different types of computers, so we're somewhat limited on what we can do out there locally. Yes, but what you could do is you could ask what kind of software the fellow is using, what is his com mm -hmm. uh, software environment, and what is his hardware environment. Mm -hmm. and Knowing that, you can uh, recruit. You can. Your job's got to be a lot easier in, a, in an environment like well, that. We we've definitely got some products that are you know geared around that right now that we're coming out. We're coming out with a new product that will actually be you know oriented for for instance the IBM PC, mm -hmm. and that will work very effectively on accessing the different services mm -hmm. within that environment. Yeah. Stephen, as you know, one of the most interesting things on CompuServe or any of these services are the SIG, the Special Interest Group, or the Special Forum, whatever mm -hmm. you call it. And of course, the success of one of those SIGs depends a lot on the SysOp, or the form administrators we tend to call them now. Wendy Woods has a report on the life of a SysOp. As you can see, we're nowhere near what you might call a bustling technological center. Yet here, in this unincorporated area of Sonoma County in California, some 25,000 people can receive answers to their technical questions about IBMs and compatibles. This is the home and office of Don Watkins, formerly an MIS manager with the banking industry, now system operator for the five IBM special interest or SIG areas of CompuServe. From his home, Don maintains and supervises the conference areas, data libraries, and message bases of CompuServe's Ohio-based mainframes. He's naturally a strong advocate of this new kind of networking. Well, they can get free or low-cost programs, user-supported programs, and they also have access to a huge intellectual base of, of talent and experience of people who have tried other products and perhaps would have a comment on those products. Don has been managing the IBM forums for five years now. He's watched the members change from hackers and hobbyists to mainstream computer users who are just interested in getting a job done. The SIGs, he says, have taken on a much broader appeal. And in our information-driven society, such resources, he says, can only get more popular. Again, I can talk to someone in New York City or Miami, Florida or Dallas, Texas about a product um, that they may know more about than I do. And uh, finding out that information and being able to get a two-way dialogue going about it is very valuable. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. With us now in the studio is Nancy Tully, Senior Editor for Information Services at Delphi. And next to Nancy is Clay Kokalis, Southwestern Sales Rep for the Dow Jones Service. George? You know, everyone knows that Dow's been a leader in financial services for a long, long time. Has Dow ever given any thought to bringing, bringing standards to this, some of this comm software and some of this online service? Uh, well, that's a very, very challenging question in the fact that uh, it is not easy in this business to get together with other uh, but you corporations. But you're big enough and, you, and you've got enough prestige where you could press forward and get that done. Well, the problem we would have with that is that there are so many different types of computers out there that we would really be getting ourselves into a nightmare in trying to know how to support each actual type of equipment. Uh, I mean, you'd have to have something separate for the Apple world, for the IBM world, and then you'd have to make sure that these products work on all these various types of machines because we really value our integrity. And if we're going to put a product out, we're going to make darn sure that it works on all the available equipment. Clay, let me ask you about Dow Jones and also Nancy about Delphi. We were just looking before at, at CompuServe, Quantum Link, sort of general interest services. Dow Jones a little more specialized. What kind of people subscribe to Dow Jones? Well, you know, we have a large number of subscribers, but, you know, we're not kidding anybody in that our, our best uh, market is our corporate customers, and that's who we are trying to develop 
and you know financial information that exactly kind of you know for the larger fortune 500 fortune 1000 type companies nancy what excuse me george what, what's the delphi niche who, who would sign up with delphi delphi's largest growth over the, over the last 18 months has been with the home user with the uh the person who has a, a new computer and wants to find out a lot about it mm -hmm. our, our latest growth effort has been with the small business pe person mm -hmm. How, what have you people done toward making the uh, interface with the fellow that tries to get it to online better. Have you addressed yourself to an operating system, hardware, or to comp packages? No, we, we do cooperate with uh, a lot of the software manufacturers in getting Delphi in the box with those manufacturers, mm -hmm. but um, we don't have any software package. Delphi is very easy to use and has been judged so by a lot of product reviewers. Clay, for people who are not familiar with the Dow Jones News Service, run us through a little bit of the service. Okay, here. for example, the database we're going to be in right now is the Dow Jones database. So you're already online. You're right, I'm already online. online. Okay. And in this database, you can get the last 90 days worth of news on any publicly held company by their stock symbol or any industry by their industry symbol. And you'll notice that the information is as recent as 90 seconds throughout the business day, and mm -hmm. it goes back 90 days. And for example, these are the last 90 days of headlines on IBM and it tells me that there are nine pages of headlines and there's a two-letter code next to each headline and to retrieve a story behind any headline you just type in the two-letter code. So you could go pull up the full text of that. Exactly. For example, story. we're going to pull up the full text of this story. Could I, could I ask it to keep track for me and put in away in a file something on two or three companies that I want to follow? Absolutely. We've got a track service that every time you access it, it allows you to create a profile of 25 stocks and you can have five profiles and every time you access it, it'll either go and get you the latest stock price and the most recent two days worth of news or either one. So it'll be collecting those stories even though you're not online. Exactly. And every time you go online, it'll just give it to you. Now, the interface that you have is uniform across the different services that access your that, services. That's that correct. True? That's correct. Now, for example, here we're just going to get the headlines on the computer industry. And as you can see, there are 20 pages of headlines on the computer industry. And what did you do? What symbol did you use to say computer it's industry? It's just .i slash EDP. EDP. I being industry, EDP being the electronic okay, which data. Is the, which is the Dow Jones. Exactly. We have categorized every major industry, every major area under the stock market, financial news, et cetera, to make it easy for the user to go directly and uh -huh. find the most recent information. But you need a manual subject. somewhere that tells you what those three-letter codes well, are. Well, either a manual. We have it online in a separate database uh -huh. or... Uh, the best way, of course, How would be... How do you be get a, to uh, that separate database? <laughs> okay, it would just be the symbols database. I and see. You would go and look up a stock symbol or an industry symbol. And that tells you what to use. Yeah. Uh, uh, can we give that to Nancy now? I'd like her to get Delphi online here so we can show sure. Delphi in just a second. If you can sure. get off of that, Clay. And while, while we're doing that, Nancy, can you talk and type at the same time? Mm -hmm. How, how is Delphi different? It is one of, the, one of the smaller kind of alternative services. And how is it different from the other mainstream ones? It's a, a relatively new service, and it's different in that uh, Delphi was originated to be an online service. It w didn't, wasn't born from excess uh, computer capacity or anything <laughs> like that. Um, it's very easy to use. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up uh, an introduction to Delphi here in its main menu, which shows the different categories of information that we have. We also have many communications capabilities, like electronic mail, mm -hmm. uh, real-time conferencing. So you and I could have a tele basically a telephone conversation across the country online. Okay, These are the, the different. So uh, different Delphi is fairly new, I guess. But none of you people ever tell how many subscribers you've got, right? It's proprietary uh. information. I see. You don't want to say how popular or how unpopular you are. I can tell you how fast Delphi has been growing. It's been growing at 12 to 15 percent a year. Show, show us Delphi. Maybe we'll figure out. For okay. Okay. Uh, you can see that the information services range from business news to travel, uh -huh. uh, electronic mail, things like that. I'm going to look at the groups and clubs menu because that has been the most popular thing over Delphi for the last year and a half. Is that a, so your version of SIG special interest? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. This is probably a fairly user friendly. Uh -huh. Yes. Piece of software, then. I have to type only the, a couple letters to okay. make it unique from the other choices. And this shows us our various groups and clubs. We have uh, groups for Atari, all the way down to Wang, Macintosh, Apple mm -hmm. II. We can look quickly at the Macintosh SIG, and you'll see some announcements. And tells you who is in charge here. And it's telling me that I have two new forum messages. Uh -huh. Somebody has posted an answer to a question that I've uh, What was prompted. that little buzz for? It was telling me that I have two new messages, and I, I have see. to pay attention. Mail alert. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So we can see what uh, I can go directly to the forum, uh -huh. and it'll show me. What was that for? Well, I'll say, it says, <laughs> press return to read my waiting messages. So okay. that's what I'll do. I posted a question that had to do with Excel software, mm -hmm. and uh, to give... Um, Somebody's left you some answers for mm -hmm. that. And this is from... Forum. Yes, this is from the username Mad Max. 
and uh -huh. he's posted that directly to me. Forum is a public message yeah. system. Anybody can read this when they go into Nancy, the Nancy, I've city. heard Delphi is less expensive than some of the others. Is it true? Yes. And, and by okay. what factor and how? Okay, a lifetime membership to Delphi is only forty nine ninety five. So you do have a membership mm -hmm. fee. That includes a handbook. And the connect time? Connect time ranges from about eleven cents a minute at night to twenty nine cents a minute during the day, uh -huh. anywhere in the U.S. Uh -huh. No monthly minimum, no extra charge okay. for twelve hundred bucks. Thank you, Dow Jones and Delphi. Now, in just a minute, we're going to take a look at perhaps one of the most successful online systems in the world, France's Minitel. So stay with us. Joining us now in the studio is Jack O'Grady, the U.S. representative for Intel Matique. Jack, you've got the Minitel, and we can see why it's called Minitel over there. Uh, and first of all, let's open it up and see what that little terminal looks like. It's an awfully cute little piece of hardware there. And we've start, we're already online with Paris with the system in France, and I've asked you to show us uh, uh, how you actually do uh, automobile shopping through the classifieds and, and explain what you've got there. In this one, I'm uh, comparing two new cars, a Mercedes, which I've already selected, now I'm going to compare that with a Jaguar. Oh, good. And also the model number. Okay, okay. so we'll pick a Jag Sovereign 3.6, let's right. say. Two. Now, you'll get a comparison which will help you buy one. Okay, and... Oh, look at that. And an numeric and a graphic display. It's your graphic display and a number Okay, display. comparing a lot of the different features of those two cars. Right. Now, the French government give these away. A lot of us over here in the computer industry think that's just a lot of socialist pap. It's probably more than that, Jack. Well, they're not given away. They're loaned uh, in the same manner in which AT&T created a telephone market by giving handsets to I people see. who became clients. So you lease the terminal as you would lease a phone here? Is that the idea? If you want more than one, you have to lease them. Mm -hmm. And the telephone company is getting over $2 million a year in, a month What's, in leases. Why should they give you or let you use a terminal free? It cuts down on the uh, paper directories, which you have to agree to forego. Ah. And it's eventually going to cut down in the number of uh, manual operators that you have servicing information. So a, a fellow gets this, he doesn't get any more, he does all his directory lookup using this then? Yes, every <sighs> telephone number in France is, is on the electronic how long, database. How long do they feel it takes before this pays off over directories? They feel that it's uh, already beginning to pay you off. They projected that the uh, investment in terminals would take five years to pay you off. They think it's paid off in uh, well, four and a half. Can you, can you get, into us, uh, get us into something else on, uh, on the system there, Jack? One of the uh, popular services over there, the newspaper services like Le Monde, which is the largest newspaper in France, this is an online database sent to Le Monde, one of the biggest newspapers yes. in France. And uh, they update this every two hours. You know you're yeah. getting your news fresh. So you can read the full paper online. Are people, in fact, doing yeah. that? Uh... Oh, absolutely. And in addition to that, all of the services, uh, newspaper services, well, if you classified ads, horoscopes, uh -huh. games. So you now, get the full paper, not just the news story. If I'm, if I'm interested in financial stuff, can I ask it to track? Can I do full text searches on things like that? Yes, it'll give you, uh, it has a bourse. Uh, so service. this is an awful lot like a lot of the online services here that uh, these independent companies offer then? Very much so. All, mm -hmm. all of them exist. And now this is offered France. through the phone company there in France? Yes. I see. Well, this terminal makes a lot of sense, Stuart. It sure does. And as you were pointing out earlier, George, this really standardizes the system. Everybody going on the oh, system yeah. has to adhere to, to the Minitel standards. It makes it easy to use. Absolutely. It's user all, friendly. It's all one and everybody's got the same terminal. Thank you very much. We're going to be back next week with part two of our look at U.S., not U.S., but in general, online databases and online services. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with this week's Computer News. In the Random Access file this week, Atari reportedly will be coming out with a low-cost laser printer during the first quarter of this year. According to some of the stories, the laser printer will resemble the Apple Laser Writer, but will be different in that it will not have its own onboard processor or memory, but instead will use the computer's processor for its brain. The rumors are that the Atari laser printer will sell for around $1,500. Atari also reportedly will bundle the new laser printer with a complete desktop publishing hardware package, which will include a hard disk version of the 1040 ST. The whole desktop publishing system will reportedly sell for around $3,000. 
At the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas this past weekend, Antic Software showed off its new StereoTech glasses, which can turn an Atari ST monitor into a three-dimensional display. The glasses use liquid crystal shutters, which are triggered as the Atari screen is refreshed. Antic says the 3D effect is twice as good as in a movie. There's already one software package for it called CAD 3D, and a 3D game is sure to follow. Mac users of the world united this past weekend at the annual Macintosh Expo in San Francisco. The recent inroads of the Mac into the business market were evidenced by a 40% increase in exhibitors at this year's Mac Expo. U.S. Robotics has announced a special deal on its new 9600 baud modem for bulletin board operators. BBS SysOps can get the new modems at half price. That means around 500 bucks if you agree to post a notice on your board saying you're using the U.S. Robotics modem. A similar offer two years ago helped push sales of the company's 2400 baud modem, which was the state of the art at that time. Time now for a look at software, and we go to our reviewer, Paul Schindler. No home handyman would dream of attempting to do repairs without a toolkit. Well, the same should go for any computer user. In the world of computers, the simplest of these tools are known as utilities. There are literally dozens of these little hummers on the market, and they perform a variety of simple-minded tasks that you shouldn't have to do for yourself. One of these tools is called the page. Now, how many times have you seen this happen? You use the DOS type command, and the information you wanted to see goes skittering off the top of the screen. If you're fast and clever, you can stop it, but why should you be fast and clever when your PC can be fast and clever? Now, let's look at that file again with the page. Notice how easy it is to see what you're looking for. Of course, you could do that with a word processor, but the page can show you the contents of any file that the type command can. And you can access the page with a path command from anywhere on a hard disk. At $22, it'd make a nice addition to anyone's system from Orion Microsystems in Waterbury, Connecticut. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. The federal government has just concluded a study on the use of computers by the feds, and it shows that the government is way behind private industry in upgrading computer equipment. The study found that the typical Fortune 500 company keeps a computer for less than five years, while the typical government office keeps a computer for more than 10 years. Engineers in Scotland report a major breakthrough in the development of computer chips which use light waves rather than electrons. The key is a new coated glass. The coating layer can either reflect the light beam or let it pass through, thus accomplishing the switching function. The developers say laser chips could be the key to fast, compact, parallel computing. Finally, the father of the video game and the talking bear, Nolan Bushnell, is back again, this time with Tech Force Toys. These are robot toys that are activated by inaudible signals delivered in a television program. The robot toys then become interactive participants with the TV show. The Tech Force toys are due out this fall and may well become the high-tech toy hit of the next Christmas shopping season. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide.